So let's take a look at this building I've been talking about. I've been thinking about the design for a long time. And uh, the idea is to have people live kind of densely, but also uh, have a very good quality of life, in fact, better than a variety of other housing arrangements. Uh, this is designed for a forest setting. So on either side of the building, there would be no other building. That increases privacy right there. One of the problems with uh, multi-story buildings like this, this is a side view, uh, is that, that there's no privacy. You always feel like somebody's looking in at you from some other building. So that's a big difference right there uh, that, that changes the appeal of the building. Another appeal of the building is that there's two ground floors. Here's one, so people could be walking right here, and there's another ground floor up here. The advantage of that is the ground floor gives the, that part of the building a huge amount of value, and, uh, and so you get it at two different levels. It's just better. Also, you can build on a slope, and you can use that slope in certain ways. So we'll talk about that soon. On the edges here, these parts, you notice this is a dotted line. Well, the reason that's a dotted line is because this is a portal on all three levels. It's a big porch. In this climate and many other climates, uh, it's really nice to have protected outdoor space to live in. And this is the size of a full room, so you can really do outdoor living. Now, in this case, these two floors here are public, as is this one. Um, let me mark that down. The reason they're public is so that the public can walk out of the rain and uh, so they can walk out of the sun. And also it encourages then businesses in that area to be able to provide services to those people easily. So the key here is that between these two floors, it's, uh, you would have a large ramp. And so you can imagine a ramp here between these two floors that somebody would, would walk up to get to the other one. Now it could be that it's more like that. Probably would be more like that. At any rate, we'd have to figure out the best slope. It can't be too slopey for people. Uh, so they have nice access. Uh, in the interior here then, uh, there would be public walkways that go up. The idea is that people tend to own on the same level. So they own a flat unit. Of course, there's a building association for everybody who lives in that section of the building. But um, the idea is you wouldn't have any private stairs going between these floors. You would only have public ramps. Uh, that's more efficient because stairs in your house are kind of annoying to use, you know, at 3 in the morning or whatever. And uh, it's, it's good to just build in public. Uh, down in here, this in the basement level, this is unusual. Uh, the basement level is good to have because uh, you have a lot of utilities that you may want to do. You certainly need to store your water down here. Those are probably going to be in large plastic cisterns. There would also be a, a large, uh, uh, probably con concrete or uh, some kind of alhebe cistern that would be public. The water would come down in light shafts into the space, uh, filling up the public alhebe and then filling up the private ones. The roof is fairly interesting. Uh, this is a concrete roof here, and that's designed for full rain catchment. All of the building's footprint should be catching rainfall. Um, out here is a little bit of an exception to that. And uh, they're guided into shafts that the rain can come down. Those same shafts could be used for light. Let's take a look at those real quick. Um, here's a light shaft. So this is the roof again, right? And now you're seeing the water comes down and is actually channeled through here into a, into a shaft that's bringing light down into a large alhebe. The large alhebe overflows into the, everybody's private cisterns, right? You have a diverter there so that you can do overflow out and you can go to a pond. This is in case you've got so much water that this whole column is going to fill up and bust your building. So you're filling these up all the time and your storm conditions then this guy fills up, overflows to there as needed. To make sure you're capturing off the roof better, there, there is sort of the idea of having these little tiny gutters, like little concrete ones, and I do like that idea. But you're talking about a lot of water, and almost anything you set up with this kind of uh, volume here is going to overflow that, and you're going to lose a lot of your potential water. So let's get a better solution. If we look bird's eye on the roof, this is the peak of the roof here. These are the edges sloping down to, the, uh, to the, where the water would collect. So the water is going down slope here and down slope here. If there was a ridge on the, on the uh, roof, a little concrete ridge, uh, big enough at each stage to continue channeling the water, it could go down here into, uh, uh, the, into the, inside the roof then, and then over to the rain shafts, which are also doubling as light shafts, bringing light into the darkest parts of the building. 
Those could actually be located in almost any area of the building. So light shafts could be put wherever people want, and then the ridges would just put the, put the water into the shaft. Uh, as far as what happens on the sides of this shaft, it's kind of an interesting thing. You're talking about a, a, a waterfall during parts of the year. You could have it be so individual owners could actually leave that open so they could watch the waterfall go down and it's an interior deck. It would be nice and warm. Uh, it might experience extreme climate changes according to how much it was raining. The other thing is the rain wouldn't be really staying there. You would not be doing any agriculture in here. Uh, you could do it with a light, but it can't in any way interact with this. This has to remain pure. It's almost tempting as far as uh, making regulations on the shaft is to say it has to be glass. So it has to be glass all the way down and that way you can prevent contaminants from entering the water supply. Um, hard to know what to do there. So we've figured out what the uh, commercial spaces are there. Let's uh, notice the portals that are private. So this is a private portal and this is a private portal. Now those could still be used for offices or whatever somebody wants. They could have, this could be privately used or it could be used for a doctor or someone to sit up there. It could be used for a restaurant. Uh, whatever you like. This could be a nice view restaurant here, or it could be private. Uh, and the value of the property is that you can do either one you want. Something else kind of interesting is up in here. We've not talked about this. This is a little plaza region. So we've got almost uh, three, floor, three rooms wide and all the way down the length of the building. Uh, there could be a lot of light in here, a lot of little skylights letting light in. And so this could be a large protected plaza on a, uh, on a cold night or on a... Um, almost any time. And it would also heat up fairly well because of the sun here. So you're looking at a really nice uh, other private space. Uh, uh, well, it's a, it's a public space for anyone when the building's open. It could be this is like a mall and you open it parts of the day. Uh, it could be open by special event only. I don't know. That's uh, to be chosen. Uh, it could be that stairs go up into it and then it's not all connected all the way down, although it would be awfully nice to keep it connected all the way down. It could be that over here in these kind of short areas, this is where the building could put uh, kind of short businesses if they wanted to, but that these three rooms here were all open for the public to walk up and down. That would be very impressive indoor space to have. As far as the upper uh, story goes here, that this portal is a little closer in, so it's kind of odd. Um, your general slope is this way. I drew this flat here, but the truth is you might get some slope down slope here. Uh, this is going to be your gardens for your waste. You've got composting toilet systems that drop compost all the way down into here. And that all gets treated and taken care of automatically. Uh, that's a, a building function for that section of the building. Hmm, any other questions? I've got plenty. Uh, there is a danger it gets too dark in here. We did talk about the light shafts. The other thing is that LED lights all day long can light all this stuff up really well. So just go ahead and light, light the hell out of it with LED lights. These portals that run along the length of the building, now these buildings would be built along contour. So you can walk a long ways along these portals. It's kind of like being on a really, uh, just walking along a plaza, but it just goes straight. Uh, those can also at night have motion sensing lights. Um, although probably in a, in a society that we want to design this building for, the, the culture we're kind of targeting and encouraging, the ideal would be as if people uh, woke up with the sunrise. In this case, this building is designed so this is east over here. And so the eastern sun would come in heating up the building immediately, very quickly. And then after that, it's getting heated up by solar hot water heaters up here that are pumping water down into a thermal mass at the base of the building. We can take a look at that. Maybe. Hmm, I lost it.